The Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, you know, I think maybe God is saying something. We've heard it a couple of times this morning already about forgiveness. But the Bible says in Proverbs 4, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. Out of your heart flow your attitudes. Out of your heart flow the things that we speak. Our words flow from our heart. And it's so important that we keep our words right. And so often, you know, we can let our words just go a, a little bit south and start to speak negatives. And it creates this environment that we live in. Our words are powerful. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat its fruit. There's power in our words. And it's so very easy to allow our words to go a little bit astray. And if we continue to do that, it'll build a wrong environment around about us that we'll enter into. We've got to keep our words right. They come out of our heart attitude. How we speak about one another. We've been doing that at the young adults. How we honour how we speak about one another. It's so a very Australian thing to take the mickey out of one another, to pull one another down, isn't it? In an Australian male culture. Have you ever noticed that? No. What do they call it in cricket? A sledging. You know, they've got all sorts of terms that we do. It's a very Australian thing to do, but I tell you, it's not kingdom. It's not kingdom. And how we speak will define our environment, how we speak about one another. I was reading a testimony from a couple that we know, uh, known for quite a long time, down in New South Wales. They passed a church down in a little town out west of New South Wales. And that <clears throat> this lady was giving a testimony, I think it was on Facebook I was reading this thing, about how they've been married now for uh, you know, a couple of decades. And she said, it took us a while to learn to speak right about one another. Because if you speak wrongly about your marriage partner, it'll come back and it builds resentment and hurt in a relationship that's supposed to be a representation of a relationship with Jesus. It's so important that we speak right about one another. It creates your environment. Out of the heart flow these issues. Out of the heart is how we speak about family. Out of the heart, how we speak about finances. Out of the heart, how... how these issues of life come, how we speak about as friends, out of the heart, how we treat one another in church, out of the heart, how we think about our, our, our workplace, the, the sphere of relationships that we have. Here's one, out of the heart, how do we think about government? Out of the heart, how do we think about those elected leaders? How do we, out of our heart, flow the issues of life? We've got to keep our heart with diligence. Nobody else can do this for you. God will help you. That's why we have the Spirit of God within us and why it's so powerful to speak in tongues. You know, when, we're, when I pray in tongues, I'm looking for the flow of heaven. I'm, I'm desiring for the flow of heaven. So when I speak, I speak of the language of heaven. And I allow God to get a hold of my tongue and speak through me. And as I do that, I'm looking for the flow of heaven to flow through me. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I do have these, these verses written down here. Um, John 7, 38. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. When we're filled with the Spirit, and the Spirit of God flows through us. And the Spirit flows, and the life flows, and the life of God flows. I want him to flow through me so that there's a fresh flow, so that there's life flowing, so that the goodness of God flows out of me, not just my opinions. I want God's opinion. Are you hearing this? When I was uh, uh, in another church, we had a little staff kitchenette where we'd boil a jug and make ourselves a cup of tea. We didn't go have to go to the main cafe. We had a little kitchenette and we boiled a jug and made a cup of tea, and we could go and have that during the day. And one day I decided to fill up this jug from by opening the lid up rather than just filling it up through the spout. I opened up the lid, and here was a cockroach half squashed in the lid. And it was pretty well cooked, 
I don't know how many times that thing had been boiled. I'm thinking, I wonder how many cups of tea I've had out of this with that thing in there. So I went to the office manager and said, I'm throwing out this jug. And I told her once, she said, please do. <laughs> See, when, when, there's, when there's stuff on the inside that gets in there, it affects the flow. When there's wrong attitudes, when there's unforgiveness, we've heard that this morning, it, it affects the flow of all the things that flow out of us and affects the, the flow of everything else. The issues of life come out of the heart. So when there's something in there that's been cooked in there, and we've allowed it to solidify in our heart, it starts to affect all the other flows. It affects how we relate to family, relate to friends, relate to workmates, relate to everybody else around about us when there's something that gets on the inside. Is this making sense this morning? And it starts to affect, we think, who's been drinking of the water that flows out of me that's tainted? It's so we've got to be diligent to keep our heart, diligent to keep our heart issues. Jesus preached the Beatitudes. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8 says this, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And if we want a relationship with God, it's so important that we be diligent to keep our heart right with God. We've got to keep the attitudes right. We've got to keep it sweetness of God flowing. Are you hearing me? There's another one that says, blessed are the poor in spirit. The, the poor in spirit means humility, dealing with pride. So when I, when I have humility and purity, I can walk step and step with God because that's what he requires, humility and purity, keeping my heart. And I don't know about you, but offenses come. Jesus didn't say you'll never get offended. Some people seem to live in that place where they're never offended. I, I'm aspiring to that place. But, but he said offenses come. All you've got to do is keep breathing. <laughs> offenses come. People wound us. We get offended. We have, used to have this saying, hurt people hurt people. When you get wounded, your natural reaction response is to wound others around you out of the hurt that's in you. You'll wound others, hurt people, hurt people. And so when somebody comes and hurts you, rather than responding and wanting to hurt back, oftentimes I try and put on the pastoral hat and the perspective of God and think, what is it that's wounding them? What is it that they're coming out of that's, that's hurting them, that they're speaking out of that they would want to hurt me? And rather than trying to react back, I try to look for the heart of God as Jesus was hanging on the cross, and Jack was talking about this morning, he said, Father, forgive them. Talking about the soldiers that had crucified him there. That's an astonishing level to live by, isn't it? But that's what, that's what God says. We've got the same spirit in us who can help us. The spirit of God comes and he convicts us of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And he convicts us of those things, the issues of the heart, and allows us to deal with the issues of the heart and to forgive. Let me speak about forgiveness for a little bit while we're on it. I went through a season where I, I got hammered by the people that I loved. I was pastoring and the people that I had served for a couple of decades attacked me. And, you know, I was going through a difficult time. I lost my finances. and You know, I don't like talking about this much because I've dealt with it all. But I just want to talk about how to walk through it if we are going to keep our heart. So, you know, they, they you know, were... were pretty nasty towards me and the people that I loved and served. And, and so I was very, very wounded. And everything was going south in my world. And so I, I was spent a season where I just walked with God and just devastated by this, walked away from ministry, walked away from pastoring. You know, my finances had gone south, my marriage had gone south, everything was in a tough situation. And, you know, these people had just crucified me. And I just felt like a real victim. And God said to me, you've got a victim mentality. And I don't really like having a victim mentality. So I had to repent of having a victim mentality. I'm not a victim. 
God has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Jesus has forgiven me. He hung on the cross. He took all that stuff. And I realised that it was my pride. Here I was being wounded, but it was my pride holding on to it and saying, poor me. Do you mind if I just be transparent with you a little this morning? So I had to deal with it. it wasn't, nobody else could do this for me. A pastor couldn't come along and pray for me and say, be healed you know, of your wounded heart. You know, I had to deal with it. I had to deal with my stuff and choose to forgive. Even though I might have been justified, you know, a lot of people are wounded and justified in their offence, but I had to choose to not be that person that was going to hold on to that thing and allow it to grow into a root of bitterness and make me bitter. I don't like bitter things. I like sweet things. Sweet tooth, you can never tell. <laughs> we don't eat sweet things. So, anyway. <laughs> I, had to, I had to work on forgiving. So this offence would come up into my mind. And I'd relive it. And then I'd feel all hurt. And then, oh, poor me. That's a victim mentality. Oh, no, I can't do that. I've got to pull down that stronghold. I choose to forgive. I bless them. And I'd look for the Spirit of God to help me. God, I forgive them. Mungo. No, I forgive them. I wish they'd get run over by No, I forgive them. And I'd have this internal battle going on. Maybe you've never been like that. Maybe you're holier than I am. But for me, I had to work. I had to choose. This is what I'm going to do. God tells me to forgive, so I'm going to work on forgiving. I choose to forgive. I choose to bless them. God, I want to be able to get to the place where I mean it, <laughs> where it's flowing out of my heart. I forgive them. I bless them. And I, and I pulled out the weeds out of my heart, the weeds of offence, the weeds of hurt, dealing with my heart issues, because I didn't want that to flow into all my other relationships. Out of the heart flow the issues of life. Dealing with it, pulling it out. I choose to feel it. It took me two years to properly deal with it, walking through it every day. I, every five minutes it had come up, I forgive them. Then every half an hour it had come up, I forgive them. Then a couple of times a day it had come up, I forgive them. Then once a week it had come up, I forgive them. And then it would never come up. And I pulled it out of my heart and it wasn't something that was eating me from the inside out. See, we live out of our inner life. That's where we, we do life comes out of what's inside us. We've got to be diligent with our own heart issues. Jesus preached the, the parable of the sower. Let's have a look at this one. This is a good one. <laughs> In Matthew chapter 13. You still awake this morning? Put your hand up if you're asleep. <laughs> Thanks, Betty. <laughs> I'll try and I'll try and preach better for you. <laughs> Matthew chapter thirteen, verse eighteen. <laughs> Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is who you receive seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns, he is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Now the seed is the word of God. It's the truths that God brings. But the ground, the ground is the condition of our heart. It's where our heart is at. 
Proverbs tells us, be diligent to keep your heart. It's where our heart is at. And the things that come and affect us. It says devils come and steal away the word. Anybody knows had an encounter with Jesus, but yet they're not going on with God now. There's lots of them. There is a spirit world that we've got to deal with. There are others who have been going on with God for a quite a season who are involved, but yet now they're not walking with God. Why? Because persecutions, issues arise, offences, unforgiveness will take you out of the kingdom of God. Anybody know anybody like that? You know a few, don't you? Come on, we're all the same as the rest of us. If we allow these things to get in our heart, they'll take us out. This is what the Bible says. So we've got to deal with it. We have to choose to forgive. We have to choose to be the ones who will walk in humility and purity and allow God to keep us as we walk this journey. As we identify and walk with God, allow His Spirit to come and, and challenge us about the hard issues. Allow Him to convict us of the stuff that gets on the inside. Not harden ourselves against the Spirit of God. The things that come around about us and want to choke out the cares of this world. I see some things happening today within, uh, you know, it's affecting the whole world, but I see a lot of people, some Christians, responding with the things that get in their heart. It's so diligent. I, this, is, this is very, very important for us as Christians that we learn to respond in righteousness to what is happening and not out of reaction. Because hurt people hurt people. Here's some people, you know, talking about the government, of what the government's doing. Some people think they're doing good, other people are against it. And the thing that is happening in our world today, I see as being so divisive. Do you mind if I speak about this a little bit? Because this is what God is speaking to me. Keep your heart with all diligence. Because if we allow ourselves to react wrongly, it becomes divisive, and that's not kingdom. All the things that Jesus spoke about kingdom were matters of the heart. The kingdom of God is not of this world. When Jesus went before the, the ruler of the day, and he was going to crucify him, he, the ruler said, they say you're the king of the Jews. And he's the ruler, he was getting a bit insecure about this. And Jesus replied, my kingdom is not of this world, John 18, 36. My kingdom is not of this world. My, if it was, my servants would fight so that I should be delivered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from here. Can I say this? If you want to get political, go right ahead. But be careful that you don't bring it into your life with God unless you have the purpose of God on it. We've got to learn to respond rightly. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Now I believe that we should have Christians in politics. I believe that though it should be representing the values of the kingdom. I believe we should have Christians representing God in every sphere of life, in the education system, in the political arena, in the media. We need Christians in, the, in arts. We need Christians in education. We need Christians in the social justice. We need Christians in every arena to bring the kingdom of God into every arena. But it's so important that we do it under the unction of God and not out of reaction and offence. Are you hearing this? It's so important that we have a kingdom perspective when we uh, have influence and not doing it out of a, a fear. Why are we saying this morning? I am no longer a slave to fear. Jesus said, do not fear him who can kill your body. That's and he lived that. But fear him who can throw your soul into hell. So fear God, which is a whole different ballgame. 
But I hear some people speaking about politics with this fear thing and it becomes a flesh response. I'm challenged by it. I'm just saying this is where I'm at. I'm working through this. God, what is a right response? How do we respond rightly which is righteous before you so it's kingdom response and not a wrong flesh fear response? I've got to be diligent to keep my heart with this matter as much with any other matter. Because I don't want to allow offence towards government to make me bitter. Whether it's an individual or whether it's government, it's still offence in my heart. I've got to be diligent to keep my heart. It's gone very quiet in here. <laughs> out of it flow the issues of life. Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within us. It's a heart issue. I've got to have a right heart response to whatever is going on in my situation, my circumstance, my world, and respond out of the kingdom of God, not out of just a reaction, out of a fear, out of a, out of a you know, hammering back. And I've got to represent God in my language and how I speak about these things. How is, how is God, what is God doing here? How can I represent what God wants to do? How can I, how can I, this is my thing that I'm working through with God. How can I represent righteousness? How can I bring what God is wanting to say? Now I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I know God does. So I'm going to walk with God in the midst of it all. I have some Christians come to me and they're a offended about things and they want me to identify with their offence. And this is one of the things that we've got to be careful of as Christians, that when we're ministering to us, let's say I'm ministering to a group of people, let's say, let's say I'm ministering to gay people and they're offended with the church, it's easy to, to put a spiritual name on a dysfunction and legitimise it before God, and it becomes an issue in my heart. So if I'm going to minister to them, I've got to be careful that I don't take on their offences in, in the, under the branding of trying to minister to them. Yeah, is this making... See, this is, we've got to get real with this. They're, these are real issues. They're real issues that we've got to work with. But... God is telling me, be diligent to keep your heart. So walk in humility and purity, and out of a pure heart, I can hear the voice of God and what God wants to do and his answer for these things. Not out of you know, my own opinion or my own reaction. But how do, we, how do we walk through it when the cares of this world can impact on us so strongly? And we see the whole world with the cares of this world, with the fear of death, with with fear of government control, with fear of these things. And it's a fear response. How do we bring the righteousness of God? But we've got to bring the values of heaven, but they've got to come from a place of a pure heart. Jesus was in the boat, asleep, in the middle of a storm, which says to me, he was at peace. The storm did not worry him. You and I are in a world that's got a bit of a storm going on. But Jesus was at peace. And everybody else was so worried, they shook him and said, Come on, Jesus, we're in a storm here. I don't know if you've gone to God like that ever. God, I'm in a storm here. Help me, God. We've got this storm going on. And you think God is asleep. Jesus was asleep. We're going to die, Jesus. They woke him up. Do you think Jesus was worried about them being full of fear? He rebuked them. Why are you so fearful? He identified the heart issue. Why are you so fearful? Why are you and I fearful about this storm? What have we got to fear? You know, if I die, I'm going to glory, I'm rejoicing, I'm happy. If I stay here, I'm going to rejoice. I'm happy. Either way, I'm rejoicing. 
Why are you fearful? Jesus said to them, why are you fearful? And then he spoke to the storm and out of this inner peace, he spoke and said, peace, be still. And the storm was calm. Jesus has authority over the storm. But our deal is to have authority over our inner life and to walk in peace so that our inner peace affects our outward world. And it's always the way with the kingdom. Our inner peace affects our outward world. We've got to have an inner purity that affects our outward life. Our inner life affects the outer one. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If they persecute us and kill us, if they shut us down and say you're not allowed to gather, if you, you know, whatever, well, have you heard about what happens with the church in China that was driven underground? And what it did, the, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. The church flourished. You know what's happening to the church in Iran at the moment? It's absolutely going ballistic. And it's been led by women. And some people would have a theological problem with that. But the church in Iran, these ladies, you know, they're not allowed to drive. They're not allowed to go out. You know, they've got to wear the thing, you know. But they are meeting in their homes, which is what they do, and the men are not home to control it. So they're gathering in their homes and they're sharing Jesus with one another and the church in Iran is absolutely flourishing. And they don't even have a bank account. See, sometimes we're looking through the, long, the wrong lens. We've got to look through the kingdom perspective and see how God wants to what God wants to do and how he's going to do it. Walk with God. Why are you fearful? Let's not walk in fear. Let's walk with God and keep our heart with all diligence for out of it flows. And then out of a the place of purity, then we can bring joy and liberty and life and everybody's long-faced and miserable. We've got Jesus. You and I have Jesus. You and I have Jesus. We've got Jesus, Adam. He's in us. <laughs> We've got Jesus. We've got Jesus. He's in me. He's alive. He's great. God is bigger than I am. I'm grateful. He's in me. Keeping my heart, allowing him to flow through, making sure that cockroach cook thing is not in there. <laughs> We've got to be careful of divisions. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3 says this. It, it, it says... Why are there still divisions amongst yourselves? Because you're still carnal. You're still living down out of your flesh. You're not living out of your spirit. You're living out of the flesh nature. Why are there still divisions amongst you? It goes on to say, if we see Jesus, we'll be like him. As we know him, we become like him. His mercies are new every day. His mercies. His mercy is new every day, the Bible says about him. His mercies are new every day, Frank. New every day. I come to Jesus and I'm grateful his mercies are new every day because sometimes I feel like I need him to forgive me every day. Maybe you're more holy than me. <laughs> I need him to, to forgive me every day. I come into the presence of God. God, you forgive me every day. Your mercies are new. Thank you, God. But then, if that's what he's like, what am I like? Are my new mercies new every day, choosing to forgive every day? I've got to be like that. I've got to choose to forgive every day. I've got to choose to be sweet every day. I'm not going to hold on to bitternesses and offences and hurts. I'm going to walk in that sweetness and be fresh and alive every day. Be sweet to my wife every day. Make a laugh every day. Have a, have, have, you know, a joyful experience every day. Every day. Is that right? Pay you later. So she's <laughs> out of the heart flow the issues of life. Out of her heart. Here's a, here's a verse that I found the other day which shocked me. Titus chapter 3 verse 10 says this. Chapter 3 and verse 10. Reject a divisive man after the first and second admonition. Oh, that's pretty strong. 
You know, we thought it took something serious to get kicked out. God considered it serious when we enter into the divisive discussions. When we become divisive, he doesn't like it. Now it's gone quiet in here. <laughs> it, that's what it says. Reject a divisive man. Deal with it. Deal with our stuff. Our stuff that wants to, I've got, I've got my agenda, I'm going to push it. Pursue peace. Live peaceably with one another. When we get a pure heart, out of that place can flow purity. When we get the sweetness of God flowing through us, we can get the wisdom of God. We need the wisdom that comes from God, which is at first peaceable. It does not bring division. The peace of God, the, the wisdom of God brings peace. We need the wisdom of God to be able to speak into these circumstances and situations that is affecting our world today. Now more than ever, we need to represent Christ and speak as Christ would about the kingdom of God, not about you know, being divisive and taking one side or the other, but about bringing the answer of heaven. And oftentimes the answer of heaven has got not, nothing to do with what we're worried about. It's about heart issues, about being full of peace and full of life and joy. It's about walking through the midst of the storm without it destroying me. It's about not living in fear, not being reactionary, but having the peace of God, bringing the peace of God into our workplace, bringing the peace of God into our family, bringing the answers of God into our, into our environment, bringing the answers of God into those that are wounded without participating in their wound. Are you hearing this? Come on, it's about answers of God. The kingdom of God is within us and then it can flow out. But we've got to make sure that we walk in humility and purity to bring those, those wisdoms, bring the life of God. But the wisdom that is from below, it says in James chapter 3, this wisdom, it says, don't join in with foolish debates. This wisdom is divisive. This wisdom is demonic. Don't rail against it bringing in selfish ambition. It says, where envy and self-seeking exist, there is every evil thing. So when we join in with this divisive debate, it allows devils in because we haven't kept a pure heart with these issues. And instead of representing God, we represent the wrong kingdom. This is what I'm challenged with because I'm, I'm working through this because God has convicted me about it. So this is why I'm sharing it with you because I think it's actually pretty relevant for most of us. We're in a very interesting season. But we've got to be diligent to keep the issues of our heart so we can represent God, represent well, and carry the life of the Spirit. Carry the, out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of my spirit shall flow the answers of heaven. Out of my inner life can flow... It's pure, it's sweet. Out of, out of my inner life, God can speak. And I can speak life. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. He brings life and life more abundantly. And as we represent the, the powers and grace of, of what he did, the life of God can flow through us without being opinionated, without being divisive, without joining in, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> I trust that this word has helped you today. As God is bringing the life, he, he wants us to, to represent well. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are his ambassadors. We are his representatives. We are co-workers with him. He is in us. He's in you. Yes, he is. He's in us. Christ is, is the one. And if we keep a pure heart, we can allow the, the, the life of his spirit to flow through us and to flow outrightly. And, and you know, without getting all antsy and messed up, God can come. And then we can walk in peace in the midst of the storm. And carry, represent well. And allow the life of God to flow through us. We can speak just sweetness and life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the life of God comes. He gives life and life more abundantly. 
and I am representing him. And as I walk in that, as I walk in the spirit of it, I can walk through life with a joy, with a smile, and, and you know, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter. Why am I fearful? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the government does. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It does not matter to God. He is not worried. It does not matter what happens to my external circumstances if my inner world is right. 3 John verse 2. Let me finish with this. Third letter of John. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. As your soul prospers, your inner life, your thought life, your mind, your will, your emotion, as your inner life prospers, everything else will flow. Your health will prosper. What Joe was saying with that testimony, when we're, our inner life gets messed up, it affects the rest of us. If we get bitter on the inside, it affects our health. Joy will make fat your bones. I must have good solid bones. <laughs> our inner life defines our outer life. I've tried to keep it to the point today and, and be quite direct with it because I believe that is what God is saying, certainly what he's saying to me. Father, I thank you for your presence today. I thank you that you help us. We need your help, Spirit of God. To do this well, we need you, Spirit of God, to help us. We need your conviction to come. We need your life to come. We need you to, to bring that and impart to us and to, to fill us with your spirit so out of what you bring, your sweetness, your fresh mercies, your newness every day, your fresh life, the fresh flow of heaven flowing through us, God, that you would help us, that you would flow through us and the grace of God would flow so powerfully in Jesus' lovely name. We love you, we love you, we love you. If this is spoken to you this morning, I want to pray and release the presence of God to help you. But it is your responsibility to keep your heart. We're going to believe for God to help you, to flow. You're dealing with uh, challenging, with, with unforgiveness. I want to pray for you that the spirit of forgiveness would be able to flow over you and release that over you. If, if you feel like there's cares of you, of this world that's gotten into your heart somehow. I want to release a presence of God over you to help you. There's anointing to touch you. Please come, please respond. If that's you this morning, you know, I, I just want to open this up so that God can help us, so that God can come. Please come on. Come on. I know there's a bunch of us. Shade of a rubber Please come. Let God get on us. I know there's more than these young people. God's speaking to all of us. Spirit of God. Come on, let God help you this morning. If you're like me, you're wrestling with this stuff too. God is good God. By His grace and His spirit and His power that He, he comes to help us. His, his power flows to help us. It's not to damage us, it's to help us. It's for us. It's for us. If you've never received Christ as your Lord and Saviour and you would like to come and just recommit to Him and allow Him to be your God and help you in these very practical ways, just give me a wave. I'd love to pray with you.